So Nick Sirianni responds to the viral video of him trolling and trash-talking Chiefs fans all the way to the locker room. Jalen Hurts didn't like the questions being asked at his last press conference. Also defends Brian Johnson. So does Nick Sirianni. Devontae Smith comments on the horizontal nature of the play call versus the Chiefs. Brian Johnson did add a new wrinkle that I would like to see more of for sure. And Kevin Byard's best game. We're going to look at what he did on some of the most impactful plays. And of course, we got to talk Eagles versus Bills tomorrow. We'll be live. What is going on, everybody? I go by Philly Mike, and this is the Philly Tall Podcast. And today we got a lot to get into. But before we do that, Eagle Nation, can I ask y'all for a favor? Help your boy out. Smash that like, subscribe if you are new, and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss these videos. Let's rock. So a quick mention, the Eagles have opened the 21-day practice window for wide receiver Quez Watkins. How do you feel about him coming back and getting the majority snaps at wide receiver three? Would you prefer Julio, Alameda Zacchaeus, or Quez Watkins? Not saying they can't rotate in and out, but who do you want to get the majority of the snaps Let me know in the comment section, Eagle Nation. Y'all know y'all football. Moving on to the Chiefs players crying because Nick Sirianni put the Chiefs fans in their place. I don't know about you, but I love that from a head coach. Y'all know the saying, if you can't take the heat, stay out the kitchen. Chiefs fans on Twitter were talking trash at the stadium when they were up 10, but they couldn't finish. Our coach is not cocky. He's confident. But the rest of the NFL hates this dude. Chiefs player responding to that video on IG saying, Dude's corny as a mug. At the end of the day, Willie Gay Jr., you didn't do enough to get the dub. Your defense was good, but hold them comments for people who care. I expect the fan base to be crying about what Nick Sirianni said and the fact that they lost a close one to the Eagles. But the players? Come on, Chiefs. Y'all supposed to be Super Bowl champions better than that, but it is what it is. It's our year. Yesterday, Nick Sirianni was asked about the viral video of him screaming or talking trash to Chiefs fans. This is what he had to say. Emotions are run high in games, and I, I, get, I give it to the, uh, the Kansas, Kansas City fans. They were, right, they were, they were rowdy. And... Uh, they were. They had some good things to say coming in from the from halftime. They had some good things to say when they would score. We, you know, sometimes I don't hear fans all that often. I did in this game, and I heard. I definitely heard them at halftime, um, and so I give them credit. They aren't Philly fans. They aren't as good as Philly fans, but I definitely, I definitely heard a couple a couple of things they were saying in the game, and so hey, that that's. Um, you always look at at those things, but I, to me, that's I'm not gonna. For, with all with everything that I am, I'm not gonna hide who I am, and and um and I think that, shoot, I, I talked to my my, <laughs> I talked to my buddy, um, and, and he said that he was talking to another teacher, um, because he's a teacher, and he said, he's like, um, how how did he say it? It was it was interesting how he said it. He goes, the other teacher, yeah, the other teacher said to my my best friend, is like. Hey, uh, did you see how cool it was that, that Nick was celebrating with the Eagles fans after the game? And he, he laughed. He goes, Nick wasn't celebrating with the Eagles fans. He was talking to the Colts fans. And uh, we, he's like, I've, he's been doing that since I've known him. This is who he is. And, and, and you know what? Um, I think if you're somebody you're not, uh, that that's gets seen through by, by everybody. Um, and, and so, hey. Like that, that was some, I, I was emotional after the game. That was, that was a little playful back and forth um, with the Kansas city fans, uh, you know, but uh, again, I tip my hat to them. They aren't, they aren't Eagles fans. Uh, they aren't as good as Eagles fans, but they're good fans. And, uh, and, and we heard them and uh, uh, that's the way it went after the game. I like Slade's reaction too. Slay was another one letting them cheese fans have it because he was being attacked on Twitter as well. It is what it is. One thing I got to say, though, Chiefs fans saying that the Eagles head coach Nick Sirianni only talked trash when he was in the tunnel, that's a lie. He was in y'all faces. (laughs) 
hey, it is what it is. It was a hard-fought win. Close game, but the Eagles got the dub. Although the sentiment from the Eagle fans via the Eagles Twitter page, right? They understand how we feel during these games as well. They posted the meme that everybody was talking about. Oh boy, I'm excited to watch my favorite team play. Then this is us throughout the game. This is so stressful. But at the end of the day, we end up saying, nice, we won. Now I know there's a lot of things to go back and nitpick about, especially offensively. Let's start with how mad Jason Kelsey is due to the fact that the offensive line allowed five sacks in the first half. A lot of that's just communication. And that's why it's frustrating. It's like, dude, it's just a nickel edge. You know, we got to know that we're going out to it or we got to communicate and make sure everybody's on the same page. Again, I'm going to keep harping on it because it was a, it was a major deal for us. And, um, you know, I'm happy that we responded to it, but we got to be much better uh, when we're in these types of environments. He also talked about all the different looks that spag through at this Eagles offensive line and how loud the crowd was. So it is what it is. We didn't do our best there. I don't think that's necessarily blame on Brian Johnson because Kelsey said that's him and Hurts' responsibility. Speaking of Jalen Hurts, who did comment on the fan criticism of Brian Johnson's play calling, as did Nick Sirianni, he also got tired of the media asking these flashy quarterback comparison questions and changed it. When are you going to talk about the Bills? How much do you watch other quarterbacks around the league to pick up things, maybe see things that you might try to work into your game, things you wouldn't, mistakes that they make that you say, okay, I can't, I can't do that myself. Like, do you, do you take in all that around the league? I'm, I'm waiting on the Bills question at this point. I'll take two more. Uh, you heard at the end, the guy said, we'll take two more. So the press conference was almost over, and we've yet to hear a question about the Bills Jalen Hurts, 1,000% about his business, even though he's 9-1 and one and crushing it. So let's talk a little bit about the Bills. Sorry I'm jumping back and forth, but half this video was done before Thanksgiving. Then I went away, and the other half is being filled out since returning. Hopefully, y'all had a great Thanksgiving. But out of 10 NFL analysts, 7 picked the Eagles, 3 picked the Bills. Let me know in the comment section who you got winning. Remember, it's in Philly, and we will be wearing our Kelly green jerseys for now just the second time. The last time we put them on, we dusted off the Miami Dolphins, who are in the same division. So it's interesting. Back-to-back -back home games, back-to-back -back AFC East opponents. Can we dust the Bills off? Can't take them lightly. Again, sorry we're not really giving you the full preview like I normally do, but the Eagles offense is averaging 27.3 points per game, which ranks fifth, and we're first on third down, which is going to come in handy against a scrappy Bills team. They come into this game on defense only allowing 17.3 points per game, which ranks fourth, so a top five offense versus a top five scoring defense. They have 19 takeaways, which is tied for second. The Eagles have been a team that can get a little sloppy on offense, right? We talk about the play calling, but turnovers need to get cleaned up as well. You got to take care of the ball. Rasul Douglas is over there. We remember him. Went from Philly to uh, Lambeau. Now he's in Buffalo. And they get 19 takeaways in, what, 10, 11 games? That's no joke. Gotta be prepared for that. As it pertains to the D-line, they did have six sacks and eight quarterback hits on the New York Jets, and that's a big deal to me because the Chiefs, who are not as talented of a D-line, gave us fits in the first half with five sacks. I know the Bills are looking at that tape saying we could do it because it's not just what they did week 11. This Bills pass rush has 39 sacks on the season, which is second, and they are first in quarterback hits. So... Leonard Floyd, who leads the team with nine and a half sacks, if they're not getting a sack, they're definitely hitting the quarterback. And with Jalen Hurts just coming off this knee injury a couple weeks ago, we need to keep our franchise quarterback standing upright. If there's one thing that we can take advantage of, and I'm not saying to not pass the ball because when you got A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, and Jalen Hurts, nobody should scare you. But the rush defense for the Bills has not been that good 4.4 yards per carry allowed to running backs, which is tied for 25th. Now, the Eagles just gave up their most yards in a game, so we might have to watch that, James Cook. But at the end of the day, I think you got to utilize Swift, Kenny G, 
Heck, give Rashad Penny a try. But the run game, the balance attack needs to be here. Let's not do too much horizontal screen wide receiver stuff, which we're going to talk about the whole Brian Johnson issue that was recorded prior to Thanksgiving. Let's get to it. Starting with Jalen Hurts' comment. So here we go. Jalen Hurts on a fan criticism of Brian Johnson's play calling. He's controlling the things that he can. I don't really know where you're getting at with this question, but I know my take on it is never get too high, never get too low. Keep the main thing the main thing. To me, that's saying he understands there's been some inconsistencies, but there's also been some great marks. At the end of the day, we would not be top seven or top 10 in all offensive categories if we were that bad overall. He also went into saying, knowing him for a long time, I know the type of person he is. He's about his business. He was the OC at Utah at the age of what, 23, 24. He's been doing this a very long time. And you talk about someone that's in rare company. He's one of a kind with the route he's taken. It's unprecedented and he's doing a great job with it. We're just going to continue to grow. Nick Sirianni took it a step further, calling his job phenomenal. Shoot, I think Brian's done a phenomenal job of calling the game. Uh, I really feel like we haven't, we haven't missed, you know, obviously Shane did an unbelievable job all last year, but I don't feel like we've missed a beat um, on offense. Uh, we're, we're, we've been in a good groove, and, and Brian has just done, to me, has done a great job of leading this group, have done, have done a great job of calling the game, um, adjusting in the game. I just think he's done a, a top-notch job, and that was an example of that. I'm not going to lie. I think that's even a little high praise for Nick Sirianni, although that's just what he does. At the end of the day, Brian Johnson has progressed as a play caller. Still got to fix some things situationally. I don't understand the fascination with the quarterback draw. We're going to get to the wide receiver screens and the horizontal play and what Devontae Smith had to say. But at the end of the day, Brian Johnson had his worst play calling game versus the Chiefs. We also had some of our worst execution as it pertains to blocking up front. So when you combine that, I can understand the fan base saying, look at this trash. We're going against the Super Bowl champs. We want to see our best game. And it wasn't our best game. But the crazy thing is this year, in every game, the Eagles offense had a negative EPA per play. The defense held the opposing offense to a negative EPA per play as well. Basically, Every bad day offensively, the defense plays their best and compensates. Now, again, what was that against the Dolphins and the Chiefs? So two great defensive games, maybe the Rams too, so maybe three because of the second half. But the rest, the offense carried a load against Washington, against Dallas, against a bunch of teams. The offense carried the load. Fran Duffy commented on some of the things being said about Brian Johnson. He said, I keep seeing this in my mentions. The Eagles are 14th in the NFL in wide receiver screens, 8.3%, and below the NFL average with 8.66. They ran a lot of screens against a blitz-heavy attack on Monday night because that's what you do against a blitz-heavy defense. Now, I understand that, but running them back-to-back-to-back to back to back, that was a little wild to my liking. And at the end of the day, if it's not working, you still got to change it up. Although that's what you do to counteract the blitz. There's other things to do, like running back screens, which worked a lot better. At the end of the day, he got to clean some stuff up, but it's a group effort in us playing better on offense because the O-line plays better. Who knows what would have matriculated down the field in the first half. So at the end of the day, it can't all go on Brian Johnson, although he's the weakest link because of the talent on the team. But 9-1 and one in top seven in a lot of offensive statistical categories, you can't be that mad. But this is a what-have-you-done-for-me-lately sport. And last week, we were bad. Devontae Smith did say something interesting about the horizontal plays. Was he talking more about Brian Johnson's play calling or the offensive line not allowing time for some deep balls? It looked like he wanted some more deep balls. There had been so much just felt like horizontal plays in that game to finally get a deep ball. How much does that mean to you? Um, I mean, we just got to go out there and just um, communicate better. It could have been a lot more of those. Um, just we need to communicate better on offense. We do that then. And they'll tell them what it would have been. You're talking communicate like between the week or like during the game? During the game. Interesting. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. However, I do like that Brian Johnson brought some pony personnel, uh, 22 if you want to call it. Boston Scott in the backfield. DeAndre Swift lined up outside. 
He's going to motion. They're going to hike the ball and give it to Boston Scott the first time. He's going to go to the right and get a few yards. Later in the game, we see this play again, right? Boston Scott in the backfield. DeAndre Swift going to motion again. And they're still going to give it to Boston Scott. And he goes up the right for a couple yards. Grant Calcaterra out there in case they need to block. <clears throat> if you look at this from the end zone position, there's a lot of room to the left. Linebacker or defensive end got to crash to Boston Scott. So he set it up. When it was clutch time, crunch time in the fourth quarter, the most creative play, the best play of the day, Swift going to run that same motion. This time they're going to give it to him because Brian Johnson seen it, adjust, defense goes to the right to stop Austin Scott, and there goes Swift, making people miss. Now the play design was great, but Swift just added the extra spice on it. You had him running all the way to about the 15-yard line. This was a huge play for the Eagles. Moving over to the defensive side, Jalen Carter was asked about his viral interception attempt in which he dove between Creed Humphrey's legs to make the play on Patrick Mahomes when he spiked the ball. But he also said, you might see some more crazy things from me throughout this year. So it looks like Jalen Carter ain't done with some stuff we ain't never see. Stay tuned. He's just a beast, a dog. He's a mother in problem. I love the fact that Jalen Carter is on the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, let's actually look at the Eagles' defense and how great Kevin Byard was. Best game of the year. But first, according to Honest NFL, the Eagles' coverage chart for Monday looks a whole lot like it was called by a Belichick disciple rather than a Vangio one. It was a ton of cover one rather than split safety cover five. Variations to take away a stud like Kelsey. Very different from how they treated Jefferson, Evans, Lamb, and Tariq Hill. I dig it, says Honest NFL. Extremely well-called game by Desai and the plan itself that staff put together was even more impressive on film. Hey, Kevin Byard's best game of the season. Could it have been due to Matt Patricia having some influence on Sean Desai? Not saying he took over, but two minds are better than one for sure. But I love the way KB played. Here we got Kevin Byard matched up against Kelsey. He's going to pass him off and play zone. He sees Mahomes trying to go to Rice. He jumps in the passing lane, makes Patrick Mahomes pull a bag. He has to scramble, and he doesn't get the first down. Big time play by Kevin Byard. Here, he's matched up against Watson. He's going to pass him off, though. Try to reroute his route, pass him off to Reed Blankenship, and he's going to follow Kadarius Toney on this drag route, this over route, and he makes the ball go out of bounds. Again, you're going to see here, he's going to interrupt Justin Watson a little bit, see that uh, Kadarius Toney's going to be open, and he goes, plays that area. This is the big-time interception, and again, he just read it very well. Uh, they're going to do an under and up route. They want to get the linebackers to drop down so Mahomes can go over the top. This wall was a little sloppy for Mahomes, but KB read it right away, jumps, and he attacks, and he gets his first interception as a Philadelphia Eagle. But that's not all. He continued to play ball. You got to love it from the veteran, right? <clears throat> Coming in, struggling a little bit, demanding respect in the locker room, and then he comes in and plays a great game against a stud tight end in Travis Kelsey. He was all over him. Here you can see the physicality. Kelsey wanted a flag, but we were harassing him all day, all day long. Here you got Kelsey lined up against who? Kevin Byard. But we also got Reed Blankenship watching him as well. So KB, Reed Blankenship both kind of shadowing, but KB got the physical part. So Kelsey guarded. Mahomes got to come off the read, steps up, and he's shoestring tackle by who? Jalen Carter. The beast, the dog, the mother bleeping problem. Great play to force Patrick Mahomes to run. Here you're going to see just KB and another body. So it was always KB and somebody else. Now Bradbury helping him, but Kevin Byard was the main uh, guy on Travis Kelsey. Here you're going to see Kelsey motion to the right. And who goes with him as well as KB? Zach Cunningham. So double team on Kelsey. Mahomes got to say, hey, Watson got one-on-one -on -one with who? Oh, Nicholas Morrow. So one-on-one -on -one with Nicholas Morrow, empty in the backfield behind him. So he's going to go to him. But Zach Cunningham wasn't double-teaming Kelsey. We baited him into that. He's looking at Patrick Mahomes. He's going to drop back into his zone responsibility, which is the middle of the field. And he's going to scare Watson, right? The footsteps. Watson feels the pressure. 
and he drops it. However, let's go back to this play real quick. Look at Kelsey. I got the arrow and the red dot, uh, the red circle around Kelsey. He beats Kevin Byard here. Ball's already out, but watch Kelsey's body language. Language. He was upset that the ball did not come to him. However, it was a good decision by uh, Mahomes. Just <clears throat> Watson could have hold it in <clears throat> due to the pressure. And Zach Cunningham. Sorry about coughing, guys. Last play. This is just uh, the, the, the key third down. Mahomes looking for Kelsey. Double team. Then he's looking at the inside out route. Slay took that away. Then he's going to look down at the possible check down. And Cunningham got that. So nobody's open on third down, which makes him run out, and Sweat gets the big-time sack. It's not really a sack. It was a grounding. But at the end of the day, that set up the fourth and 25. This was the best called pass defense, and it might have had a little bit to do with Matt Patricia. So, hey, we all thought that was going to be a bad signing. I'm not saying it's a 1,000% due to Matt Patricia, but according to Honest NFL, he saw a little bit of a Belichick disciple in this scheme. So... I love the wrinkle or adjustment for a pass defense that was playing pretty darn bad via statistically. And again, they carried a load this time against the Bills. I need to see Brian Johnson, Jalen Hurts, and this offense put up a 30, maybe 40 burger. Because guess what? We're going to be rocking our Kelly Green unis. And last time we seen that, the offense went off. They scored over 30 against a pretty decent Miami Dolphins defense. With all that being said, drop the muscle emoji if you got nothing to say. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section, Eagle Nation. I love hearing from you. Happy Thanksgiving. Make sure you're celebrating and doing everything right. Until next time, you know what time it is. We out.